Next up, we have Guillaume Nervo, a co-founder of Angle, who will be talking about the core limitations to close the DeFi CeFi efficiency gap. Guillaume, everyone. Yeah, sorry for being a little bit late, but um, I'm, I'm here. So um, I'm Guillaume Nervo, co-founder of Angle uh, Protocol. So it's uh, for, for those who don't know, and I'm going to do a quick uh, intro first, and then we're going to go back to Oracles and how we use it at Angle. So it's a decentralized, uh, decentralized uh, stablecoin uh, protocol. And so we started with AG Euro, so um, a stable, uh, stable Euro. And it's uh, just a quick intro about uh, Angle. And so it's the most uh, liquid and has the most volume in the stable Euro space on mainnet. And it makes, in, in, in it makes like uh, 70, 70 to 80% of the volume. So it's a pretty large one. Um, and it's available on multiple chains, so we are chain agnostic. Uh, so we launch on mainnet, uh, Polygon, uh, etc. Uh, and so we want to be present on, on every chain. <coughs> so um, we were exposed to the USDC DPEG um, and to the Euler hack. And so that's why we came up with uh, the transmitters that I'm going to present uh, shortly, which try to prevent this kind of outcomes that happen during these times. Um, and we also have, which is something not directly related to, um, to, to the stablecoin protocol, but a new incentivization uh, system, which is called Merkle, uh, on top of Uniswap V3. Um, and yeah, we may be looking for new stablecoins, such as a, a stable ETH uh, in the future. So um, just a quick um, a quick intro on like or Oracle uh, Oracle State in DeFi. Uh, so I guess like uh, the, the people be, uh, before me just talk about that too. But it's important for the next step. So um, we are heavily reliant on traps and spot spot price. Like so, we've been using a lot of um, Uniswap uh, trap on Angle. So for instance, for uh, when you were swapping USDC for AG Euro on the protocol, so on the price stability module, there was like, we knew that you couldn't just take like the spot of Oracle uh, of the Chainlink Oracle or spot of uh, Uniswap Trap. So we take kind of like the best price for the protocol between these two. So when you were interacting with Angle, so it's not the case anymore because uh, we introduced a transmitter which uh, rely on dif different mechanism. And uh, so, as I said, there is Chainlink, Pice, Kaiko, so different of uh, centralized feed, but they are still like the most used in DeFi uh, nowadays. And it's because with Dextrap, for instance, you, if you want to be resistant to attacks, you're going to need to expand the time of uh, weighted average. And so you're going to have like a less precise Oracle. And so depending on your use case, you don't want to have this because you can be um, you can be uh, open to front running attacks or like any other type of attack. So you cannot just rely on trap when we need when you need both uh, trades to happen. Um, so yeah, and just to continue on that, um, so most of stable coins are going toward like a system that is made from uh, a price stability module. So where you can most of the time swap a stable, a centralized stable against your stable coin. And this is done as, uh, at an Oracle price. So you need like a really precise Oracle. Um, but some others doesn't need like to be super precise. It can be like a lower bound or an upper bound, depending on, on your model. And this is the case with uh, CDP, so collateral, collateralized debt position, because um, not with all the liquidation mechanism, but if you take the liquidation mechanism on Angle or what was on Euler, which is as uh, when the health factor is diminishing, the uh, discount given is augmenting. And so you don't really care to have like a super precise Oracle because if your Oracle is just like, it's, an upper, it's a lower bound or the real price, then you just need to have liquidators that are super efficient and they will just take the, the, the opportunity when uh, there is a 2 or 3% uh, discount. So like for the CDPs in general, if your system is well made, you don't need to have a precise oracle, you just need a lower bound on the oracle. So there's really two different differentiation, and so it's going to come up also with one of the use cases that we have at Angle uh, in the following sl slides. So yeah. So as I was teasing you, the transmitter, so it's a price stability module. And 
we learn from, uh, okay, it's a bit ugly, <laughs> don't be scared, <laughs> it's nothing too, too complicated. But so just like to have a recap, so what happened during the USDC peg? so it was uh, 11 of March, like 10, 11, 12, the whole weekend. It, it was a, a nightmare, but yeah. And so what happened is that USDC peg uh, up to 90 cents. And so there was multiple uh, behavior, like in the stablecoin space. There was makers that got full of USDC in the, in the reserve because they were pricing one USDC to one USD. And so it was cheap for people to arbitrage the market, buy it to 90 cents and sell it to maker at one dollar. And so there was a, an arbitrage loop and so Maker got a lot of USDC in their reserve. So in my point of view, it's not a good thing because it ended up well because USDC went back to $1, so they just like got a larger share of USDC. But if it went on the other side, they would just have made like 10% loss on every, every, uh, every die they, they exited. And so in our case, it was different. It was um, priced at uh, 0 0.9, so we were looking at one, uh, chain link feed. And so what happened was the, um, the inverse. So people arbitraging us, but with, while taking a bet because they were uh, saying, OK, so I guess it's not really worth 0 0.9, so I'm going to buy it at angle at 0 0.9, and I'm just going to re-come back after that and sell it back to $1. So in my opinion, I prefer like, to have this oracle because you never know what can happen in the future. But it was not enough uh, to protect the protocol against that. And so that's what we try to do with the transmitter. So we still rely on Chainlink oracles, but there is some firewalls on the protocol that like, kind of stop, off, stop trading these assets when uh, your exposure to each one uh, go down or go to up. So basically what is going to happen is you have target exposure for all the collateral. So that, let's say there is uh, stable, uh, stable A and stable B, and you want 40% uh, of, your of your reserve to be in uh, your uh, stable A and 60% in stable B. What's going to happen is that when you're going to trade and that the protocol is at 40, 60, when you're going to trade, it's going to be cheap in fees. But as soon as this exposure deviates, let's say that now right, uh, we have 20% uh, of stable A and 80% of stable B in the protocol, the fees are, are going to skyrocket. So we're going to still rely on, on, uh, on a Chainlink Oracle, but what's going to happen is just like the Oracle will be modified by the fees and it will just be too expensive to buy, buy it to the protocol. And so that's a really good point to have in uh, your stablecoin protocol because you don't, don't want to be exposed to the weakest one. And so most of the time, so a, uh, a PSM is kind of like an IMM, and in an IMM, you always ended up, ends up with the weakest assets. And so you need to protect against that. And that's what we do by kind of stop trading when you go over some, some threshold. Um, and so it's not really like Oracle link, but it's just like, in my opinion, at least for stablecoin stable protocol, you always really need to um, depend on these oracles because you don't want to have a price discovery mechanism or this kind of stuff. It would be another kill. So you still need to use these oracles, but have like directly integrated firewalls in your system. And that's what we're trying to do. And so backing to that, so there's like three entry points in this um, in this pro in in this uh, in this uh, protocol. Mint burn redemption. So mint and burn is the classic function that you know with PSM, so you're going to swap at Oracle value, but with some modification. So at mint, what's going to happen is you can swap against the Oracle value, like the, the max between 1 and the Oracle value. So let's say that USDC is at 0 0.9, the, the system will only trade it at 1. So you're going to bring one USDC, you're going to get, uh, you, you're going to get uh, one, uh, one AG euro. And so, uh, uh, sorry, it's the inverse. Uh, you're going to bring uh, one USDC, you're going to get 0 0.9 uh, AG euro. Um, and so that's a good thing. And on the burden side, what we're going to do is take the mean of the price of all the assets, so the mean of the price of stable, uh, of stable A and stable B, and one, to again, like, so one is like kind of a firewall again to say, okay, 
we take the hypothesis that every stable is trading at one euro, but it's always on a good side for the protocol. It's just like trading at the best value. And so what it is, this two function, is just like utilita utilitaries for, for users. But what we would like to do, like as a stablecoin protocol, is stay at this target exposure. And so you would use the function redemption or like deposits, which is kind of the same thing as an ETF market. So like a primary ETF market is you need to bring all the asset at once and deposit at the target exposure. So you're going to have to bring 0.4 of uh, stable A and 0.6 of stable B to gain one AG euro. And this, if you only, if there was no mint and burn function, if you were only re using redemption and deposit, you will know for sure your exposure at all time. You will know for sure it's at 40% of stable A, 60% of stable B. And then your user, like uh, user of AG euro, we know for sure that even if there is a black swan even even if USDC goes to zero, zero or totally zero, you're going to be sure that it won't be just like swap all in USDC and you still have like this 60%. So it's just like reducing the, the overall risk. So you may be exposed like to more stables while we would keep like it, um, we'd keep it like close to uh, what kind of table we're going to accept. Um, but it's a good protection. And so, yeah, mint burn more utilitarian because you don't want people like to come and get uh, with 10 collateral, 10 different collaterals your stable. It's not user friendly. Nobody wants that. So you just like do these two function on top. Um, yeah. So I actually I had example after that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, let's say um, so. Uh, uh, stable A is uh, at uh, 0 0.95 uh, euro. You're going to meet 0 0.95 AG euro with 1 euro A. Uh, if it's at 1 euro, 1 AG euro. And if it's above, we don't care. We don't want to buy your stable, like your centralized stable, to 1.1 because it doesn't make sense. So there just must be something weird on the market. We don't care. <laughs> We're just going to buy it at 1. Um, and on the other side, so again, if your A is at uh, 0 0.95, you'll be at 1 euro. If you come and burn when a euro for some euro, euro A, you're going to get 0 0.95. And same thing is happening if it's the euro, like the stable B, that is at uh, 0 0.95. So it's just like being super cautious about when trading and just let the arbitrage use the redemption and uh, deposit uh, function uh, when this is happening. OK. And so what is really nice about that, about the redemption, is that you don't need any, you don't actually need any oracles. Because you just, you need it for, to compute the collateral ratio, but computing the collateral ratio, so collateral ratio is just uh, the sum of all your collateral in value divided by the number of liabilities, so the number of uh, stable you have outside. And so you cannot deflate it, you can always just like increase it. And so, what is happening is that as you're only giving proportion, you don't need to have the value of it. It's just like if someone came and just like redeem one AG euro uh, and currently proportion of 40 and 60%, it's just going to get like the 40 and 60%. That's it. So you don't need to know what is the value that you give. Maybe you just gave him like 0 0.2 because the two stable are like just like dumped totally, but you just give proportion. So that's the. Uh, that's the, the cool thing about that is just being dependent on oracles, but have like firewalls to just okay, uh, if I want to stop trading or if any user wants to go out, he can, and there is no bank run possible. Um, so yeah, so I, I think I'm just gonna skip that because it's not super important. It's just like some example of exposure, and I want to talk about um, curve LP tokens uh, after that. Um, yeah. Don't care. OK. <laughs> so du coup, uh, CDPs. Uh, so uh, CDPs, how, how does it work? So you have a S factor. So you deposit some collaterals. Um, and you have some depth. So this is the value of S, uh, S factor. And so as I was saying, the way the liquidation works is that the lower your S factor is, the larger the liquida liquidation um, uh, liquidation discount the, the the liquidator we get, 
Um, and so we only need a, a lower bound on the price. And so that's the use case of uh, curve LP tokens. So I don't know if you if you saw uh, articles about that, so saying that you can easily uh, have a lower bound on uh, LP tokens by uh, taking uh, the virtual price, uh, multiplying by the mean value of uh, the oracles of any tokens of the pool. So uh, the virtual price is what it's called D in the curve white paper. And so it seems like a bit uh, voodoo for me because I was like, yeah, okay, where does it come from? Uh, I, I didn't see any 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 uh, any explanation any explanation about that. But I was like, okay, so I'm gonna do a bit of some research before we take that as collateral in in, uh, in angle. And so I I kind of deep into it. I also like talked to Michael because uh, at some point I was like, okay, there, there must be something off. But um, yeah, so so this. Uh, Cute formula, uh, which is uh, the stable invariant, uh, stable invariant formula uh, of uh, of curve pools, um, with in initialization. So the D is the sum of the X E, so X E or the collaterals. So let's say, for instance, the three pool. So you have DAI, USDC, USDT, uh, and at first I'm going to put like one third, uh, like one 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 of each uh, each token, and I'm like initializing the pool. And so we want at all times that this formula to be uh, to be um, to be uh, to be verified. So first, what can we see with uh, this formula is that D is not manipu manipula manipulable by via swaps because when you do a swap, you don't touch the D, but you want still that this equation holds. So you're not manipulating. You cannot manipulate the pool, manipulate the pool like that. And given a liquidity, swap will always give a worse price than the constant sum, constant sum invariant with parameters. And this is because, so you know that at equilibrium, you have D is equal to sum XE. So if we are in the two, 2D case, this is basically, um, this is basically having a, like a straight line, so a constant sum, uh, constant sum uh, uh, invariant. So you have like this line like here. And you know that when x is equal to y, you know that this is equal to d. And so it just gives you like the curve is always below uh, the, the, the curve uh, y equal d minus x is always below this invariant stable, uh, in, uh, invariant, uh, stable swap invariant. And so if somebody trades, you're going to know for sure that the value that you will get here is uh, larger than D. And so it's like super important because when you price the pool, you say, okay, so my price is like D divided by total supply for uh, multiplied by mean PI. And so basically what it means is that if the curve was uh, a stable, uh, stable sum, you would be on this side. So I'm pricing the, the token with this, uh, this, uh, this curve. And so when you multiply by mean PI, it just means that, okay, so either I have a D of one token, so either I have D of stable A, or either I have D of stable B, because when swapping, you can be on any point of this curve. And so you just need to take the one that has the lowest value. So that's why you take the mean PI, it's just so that you take the worst case, the worst price that you can have, along all this curve, so that's what you do. And so, as we said just before, we know that this curve is always below what you can have with the real curve, so with the real stable swap invariant. Then you know that all the values in this curve it will be lower than all the values of this curve. And so if you take the mean on, on top of that, so it's going to always be a lower price than, uh, than, uh, than what you will have on the stable inva invariant pool. So uh, I hope it was a bit clear, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah. So like really important to understand that because I saw that in many protocol, and I think nobody just like tried really to understand. And I guess it was only Michael that was doing like the the computation <laughs> at his home, and so he was like, yeah, it's working, yeah. And everybody say, okay, yeah, it's working. Like I feel like even the code also of Curve, uh, a lot of people are doing that, and so maybe maybe not that good. <laughs>
so yeah, that, that's it. That's what I wanted to present. Uh, and so uh, just like a, a quick use case of Euro and uh, just like to, if you want to follow also Angle protocol. So we're going to launch with a transmitter in like two weeks. And we're going to accept uh, off-chain assets too. So it's not only like stable A, stable B. There are going to be uh, like, um, like kind of bonds uh, like backing AG Euro. So yeah, um, thanks.